Hello. Hello, Internet. And welcome to a very special live stream edition of Potterless starring me, Mike Schubert, a grown man who never read the Harry Potter series as a kid, uh, but he did as an adult. And now it's his job, and it's very strange. Uh, so I am joined by a familiar voice on the podcast, and now we are both faces here. Uh, yes. So it's our UK correspondent, Dottie James. Dottie, Hello. how's it going? <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well. I am, I mean, all things considered, doing very well, you know. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. All things considered, doing okay. Good. Yeah. And and recently you just completed school, I have learned. I did, yeah. I um, I didn't graduate, but I finished the last ever assignment for my university career, so uh, yesterday, so yay. That's <laughs> wonderful. Congratulations. Uh, as someone that has been long done with school for many years, <laughs> yeah. I, it's a good feeling to not have to like do homework and stuff. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. So Nightmares speaking of <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of school and everything, um, let's let's get to what we're doing in this stream today. So Absolutely. as I have learned the hard way, um, mm -hmm. there are lots of differences between the UK editions of the books and the US editions of the Harry Potter books. Yes. And what uh, what comes up often, of course, in the podcast Potterless, in case anyone hasn't listened, is that I very early on was bad at knowing what things were British and what things mm -hmm. were magical. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I messed up many things. Notably, I thought that treacle tarts were like a magic thing. Yeah. And uh, there were many other Hilarious. mistakes that I made. <laughs> so I had Dottie on as, a, as an early guest. And then eventually when I kept messing up British stuff, I was like, can you just can you just come on and like help me when I mess up yeah, British you stuff? You did. And it's not your fault. It's, it's, we're a small country. <laughs> you know, <laughs> why would you know what treacle tart is? It's, I guess it's like an English person thinking that Doritos are magic rather than. Ah, uh, I get it. Real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like apple turnover. That's clearly a British thing <laughs> or a, a magical thing instead. But yeah, no, now yeah. I, now thankfully you've popped in and I'm more familiar with British phrases. Uh, mm -hmm. And now that I've watched The Great British Bake Off, I will never make the mistake of not oh, knowing yeah. what a treacle tart is. But Absolutely. recently I found, a, I found a website that documents all of the changes that they make from mm -hmm. the UK editions to the US editions. Incredible. And uh, there's a ton of changes. There's so many. I had really? no idea how, how many there are. Um, is so it things, I like, just have things like a trash can to a bin? Or like yeah so some of the some of the things are pretty obvious i've learned the the biggest difference is that just like the words for schooling related things are very different so just like schedules what we call schedules you guys call like timetables yeah and then there's different things of like classes and courses so like things that kind of make sense um yeah. but then there's some i've really noted the ones that made it seem like almost different phrases uh <laughs> so that we can just kind of for the entire time here just we do a whole bunch of entirely... British boundaries different series across Harry Potter I might think of something I might like love Umbridge because of the British translation and you <laughs> well what's funny is when I was preparing for doing stuff for the podcast I would mm -hmm. switch between reading the books and then doing the audiobooks if I was mm -hmm. like on the move or listening while I was doing chores or something yeah, and yeah. I think some of the audiobooks that I have like go off the British versions and then the books that I have are all US so like sometimes things are changed from thing to thing Absolutely. but let's, let's just get into it um yes. For book one, the first thing that I have is that they are, uh, they have a phrase that in the UK edition says the baker's opposite, which in the US edition is just called the bakery. Is that a thing? The, ba the baker's, what's the context of the line? Do we know? I, so it, it's, they're talking about going to a bakery and it says they are going to the baker's opposite. Opposite what? <laughs> Okay, when I, when I Googled, <laughs> I Googled some of them. Uh, this one, it said just like in the UK that that's a way that you could say like across the street from yeah. your house oh, is you yes, just say like yeah. the baker's opposite. If it's, okay. if it's opposite you. Oh, do you not say that there? No, we would just, we if anything, we would just say like the bakery across the street. Right. Or... Okay. Yeah. So they mean the baker's opposite where you are or where you're okay. going to be or yeah. So the baker's opposite. <laughs> do you do you say that about like any store or is it specifically like, okay if i was going to the apple store or, or somewhere i'd be like oh yeah the apple store across from you know urban outfitters <laughs> well okay. sorry no right. that's okay. not a british example opposite, the, opposite of. <laughs> apple store opposite yeah Okay, so one of the more prolific things, and this is something that I didn't realize was a difference. So in the UK edition, mm -hmm. the they refer to something. It's like a password that Dumbledore has and stuff as Sherbert Le or Sherbert Lemons. 
the mm -hmm. little like little what we call lemon drops. So what I thought when they were saying sherbet uh -huh. lemon was like literally lemon flavored sherbet, like the ice cream. But sherbet lemons are like hard candies with stuff in the middle. Yes. So what is the deal there? <laughs> so 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 sherbet lemon is a hard yeah it's a hard candy a hard sweet that has do you have sherbet in America? We do. Uh, it's okay. like it's like similar to sorbet. It's like ice cream, but not really. And then growing up, everyone thought it was very funny to call me Mike <laughs> Sherbert instead ah. of Schubert. Is Sherbert a completely different thing it's over there? Ice cream here at all? Oh, it's okay. Like, it's like sour, like sugar. That's just oh. like it's like it, it's kind of like the best way I to, could describe it is like powdered sugar in the middle of okay. a candy. That when you get to the middle, it's like it's like a gusher, uh. but it's like powder. Oh, see? wow. Okay. Yeah. I saw a picture of, of what a sherbet lemon was, and it's very different. Yeah, so here yeah. we call sherbet sor or it's like it's very similar to sorbet. I think there is a difference between the two, and I'm not smart enough to know oh, it. No way. I think it's something where if it's like fruit or not, or one is more icy than the other. Um, yeah. But yeah, I here in the no States, idea. sherbet is like ice cream. Oh, I had no idea. And they don't translate that for the American one? They turn it into lemon drops instead, mm, and what you okay. call, what you call sherbet lemons are what we call lemon drops. Oh, so it's you just do like, have them? We do have it. I don't know yeah. that we have it with like the powdered stuff in the middle, but like <laughs> if you had just like a lemon hard candy, you would yes. call it a lemon drop. Ah, but then it's okay. also confusing because there is an alcoholic beverage here, also called a lemon drop, which is different. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you guys have taken the concept of sherbet lemons and just blown them wide open for just me. Totally changed it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So another one is that in the UK edition, they call something the cooker and we call it the stove. Do you call stoves cookers? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. They, and that would be specifically like what you would put uh, like the, the thing on top is like the, the stove. Because we have like stove on top. Yeah, with the, with the flames and then the mm. oven is like inside. Yeah, okay. the hob or the We cooker. never call them cookers. Is cooker common so. or is it just like one of the ways to refer to it? No, it's definitely, I think it's definitely a common way of saying it. It's like interchangeable with stove or, or hob. Do you call them hobs? No, we don't. I think okay. stove is like the only thing. I think okay. I've never heard anything else from stove. Sometimes okay. people call it grill, but usually we refer to grill as like the yeah, big, like the grill. Like I'm making hamburgers and it's got yeah. a lid kind of deal. Yeah, no, it's not okay. a grill. I wouldn't say it was a grill um, here. Um, but yeah, stove or a hob or a cooker. Okay. I wonder where that right. comes up in the books. So the, um, I'm not sure. This was all in book one. I would assume it's when Harry's like making bacon for the Dursleys. Ooh, yeah, or when she's dyeing um, Dudley's uniform, maybe. Oh, yeah, when she's like yeah. trying to shrink it for Harry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the next one is the the British call it an ice lolly and we call it an ice pop, like a frozen thing on a popsicle. Is that true? Yeah, we call them ice lollies. Um, then there's the ones that come in the tubes that no one seems to know the name of, even though they're, even in the UK, mm. we all have different names for them. But the ones on a stick, everyone seems to call them ice lollies, yeah. Or a lolly. I feel like that makes no, more sense, because yeah, nice. I think we just kind of call everything an ice pop, um, which mm. is, I guess, short for popsicle. But you're right, is that if someone said ice pop, I think the first thing that would come to mind for me is, mm. like, the, the clear you ones where you popsicles? suck it and it's... Yeah, like everything is pop. Any any like frozen <laughs> like icy kind of thing we call a popsicle, but it's like okay. a big general term for everything. Um, right. So I think ice pop is just like another phrase of that. But yeah, it is it is quite cumbersome to refer to anything <laughs> that's frozen on a stick as like a frozen popsicle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then have to and then have to explain which one you mean. <laughs> exactly. Popsicle, yeah. Gotcha. Ice lolly makes more sense. It's like a lollipop made of ice. Yeah, I couldn't tell you where it comes from. Except for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So here's another one. And I don't know if this, there's some of the changes that they make where I don't know if it's a translation thing mm. or if it's just um, like how, uh, if it's just like completely different. There's in the UK edition in book one, they call something a rounder. And then in the US edition, they change it to a baseball. Is that the same thing or is rounder something else? And then we rounders changed it is... in the US edition of baseball to make it make more sense. Yeah, it's a good translation, I think, because rounders is a sport in the UK and I don't know the rules, so I'm not going to go into it. But mm. it's similar to baseball in that you, you have a bat. Okay. It's quite short, though. It's about this long. And, um, oh, okay. Yeah, you, you're only allowed to hold it with one hand. 
and you oh. you do the same thing where someone pitches it to you, you hit it as far as you can with your one hand, mm-hmm. and then you go to each base. Um, but okay. you can't ever be on a. I think you can't ever be on the base at the same time as another player or something like that, where you get, you yeah. can get out somehow. And if they tap the, if the other team, the fielding team tap the base of your thing, mm-hmm. then you're out. So it's quite similar. I think. It's okay. That sounds exactly like baseball. Yeah, exactly. It's a, I think that's a good translation to make for people in America. Okay. Yeah. That's very fun. I have no idea the context of that, <laughs> um, but I don't remember them talking about baseball. <laughs> no, neither do I. Or rounders even. Yeah. Um, when you come to the UK, <laughs> yeah. we'll play. We'll play a game of rounders. Okay. Good. Yeah. We'll play some rounders. It'll be great. Um, so the next one in the UK edition, in the in the UK edition, they call it a jacket potato, and we call it a baked potato. Is that what you call it? Oh, interesting. Yeah. We call it jacket potatoes because it's still got its jacket on. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> um, Do you call and... potato skin a potato jacket? No, <laughs> no, we don't. We okay. It in. It's really strange. Yeah, we've personified <laughs> it. I, in my mind, and I might be wrong, baked potatoes are almost like new potatoes. They're like the little ones. So we, it's, it's a couple of different things. What we usually refer to in America as a baked potato is you have like your regular brown, like russet potato, yes. and then you slice it lengthwise, and yeah. then you put it in like ha- yes. a little open get it yes. baked and then of course in america you top it with like sour cream bacon oh, cheese really? chives butter what we use. not baked beans that's what you guys yeah. do. that sounds that yeah. feels very british baked beans uh, are like prawns sometimes oh interesting yeah yeah <laughs> i get it you guys have prawn chips so it would make sense you, you do it's a big flavor here a different potato product <laughs> product i wonder when they use that in the book as well I, this is every time you say one know. i can't think it could be when. in the feast <laughs> jacket potato yeah maybe yeah maybe i don't know jacket potato is so cute though because it still has its jacket on that's adorable <laughs> yeah. i love it yeah absolutely <laughs> okay and then the last one for book one is that there is a there's a part where the british book says um that someone was nobbled and then in the American edition, they say clobbered. So is nobbled just a way to say, like, that you beat something up? I guess. I haven't... I, it might have been a J.K. Rowling sort of generational thing where uh, okay. she obviously grew up in the 70s and 80s. This book is set in the mm-hmm. 90s, but I don't think she would have necessarily known that that's not language that 90s kids would have used as a 90s yeah. kid myself. Um, right. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> But it does. Okay. It, you, you can kind of guess what it means, can't you? You can kind of infer, I suppose. Inf- not bother. Yeah. It's one of those like I enjoy the the Britishisms that are basically like onomatopoeia esque, where just like based on the sound of it, like oh, he was nobbled. Yeah, it sounds like he got beat up. It makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Sounds like a weathered like thing. Nibbled. Okay, so yeah, 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 nibbled and nobbled. So the the next set of things is from book two. That was everything in book one. Here's one where, like, I understand the translation, but I still just enjoyed how British it was, is there's a part in the book where, um, in the U.S. edition, someone, like, sarcastically says, like, oh, well, you should talk, uh, which is saying, like, you know, I can't believe you would say this. And in the British version, they say, bit rich coming from you. Oh, yeah. Bit rich. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people, that's, that's how good. you can on it. Yeah. It's like. That's, that's a really fun one. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's or oh, that's rich as well. It just you don't even have to say the whole sentence. Wow. People know the the Man. meaning. <laughs> Something's a bit rich. Coming. I really so if like you that. said like to me, like if you were making fun of a Harry Potter podcast that I was making, I could be like, bit rich uh-huh. coming from you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bit rich, or if right? I made fun of you for mis- mispronouncing a word, then yeah. <laughs> you could be like, bit rich. bit rich coming from you. <laughs> Yeah. Or you'd be like, wow, the shirt you're wearing is very vibrant today. Yeah, <laughs> bit rich. Bit rich right? <laughs> That's good. I like it. I want to yeah. like adopt some of these Britishisms. Oh, you That's a really good one. Should. I also enjoy. I want to do that. I really also like uh, when you when you guys call things like when you call someone thick or dense. That's really uh-huh. good. I'm yeah. jealous that that isn't as prolific here. Thick seems to be like, like it's it's quite. <laughs> it depends, kind of who like what how you kind of speak with your friends, but like. If I were to use it, because I don't use it a lot, then I really think the person is thick. Like, Ooh. you know, then I really think they're thick. But if you kind of throw it around a lot, like, like the word, like, uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a word that rhymes with, like, Rick. I don't know if I can say it. But um, <laughs> that we use in the <laughs> Yeah. And, um, like, 
you could people insult each other a lot as like part of our banter i suppose so yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like cool that's very though. good uh, yeah i'm, I'm jealous so the the next difference that i found is that in the uk edition they refer to something as a bonnet and then in the us one they call it a hood so is mm-hmm. that like of do you call like if, if you put your hood on on your sweatshirt would you call it a bonnet so no no so they're talking about cars okay so oh oh whoa oh like the oh yeah <laughs> well, you, like, why would you call it a don't. bonnet <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i actually don't know because it's not like a, a hat for your car not really <laughs> yeah it's, i mean it's in the front it's like kind yeah. of on top but yeah that's it's, that's strange to be like oh quick open up the bonnet and look at the bonnet. engine <laughs> look under look under the bonnet we call it a bonnet and then we call the the trunk of the car the boot so <laughs> There's a lot boots. of clothing that makes its way into our I was going to say. So yeah. I guess like a car in the UK, they imagine like a person laying down. Yes. And their and head like... is at the very front and their feet are at the very back. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's the only way we could wrap our way head around the machine. And that's why the, the front two doors are called arms and the back two yes. doors are called knees. <laughs> yes, in the UK, the well, it is headlights on the front of the car. That's true. Huh. We might have just yeah. unlocked something about that. Huh. I think oh, we have. We figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one is in the UK edition, it calls something a jump jet. And then in the US, they call it a missile. Uh, is that a thing? Uh, I, I suppose. I think I'd hear j- missile more than I would hear jump jet, which I feel like I'm hearing for the first time. Yeah. Um, it's hyphenated. I can't imagine the really? context in the second book where they used a missile, unless it I was know. like... <laughs> describing something where it was like the spell shot out like a jump like jet a, or the spell shot out like a missile but yeah, i don't remember the use of missile that, i think that would be another case of uh, a generational thing with jk rowling because language over the uk over the generations in mm-hmm. the uk as in america slang is different i suppose and so a lot mm-hmm. of the slang that she puts in the mouths of the teenagers is actually quite old-fashioned some of the time okay all right um so sense. yeah yeah that might be that so here's one that I thought was fun is that um, talking about in the UK edition, they say that they prized something, uh, which in the US edition they say is wrenched. And then similarly, they, the next sentence, the UK edition says that it was pride, prided open. And then in the US edition, they just say opened. So like, I understand like to pry something open, but yeah. I've never heard of prized. Like, yeah, yeah, you prize something open. So pri- you, Do you uh, also say pry, though? Yeah, you, pr- you can pry something open or you can prize it open. So, like, if you're opening, like, a jar of jelly, which would be jam, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> right. you prize it open. And then I suppose, yeah, I suppose then the past tense is prided. But I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> so is there a difference to pry something open and then to no. prize something open? No, not, so not they're interchangeable all. words that sound almost exactly yeah. the same. Just extra ones, you know, in case you feel like prizing <laughs> instead of prying. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Just having like, oh, let's have three words that all sound the same and mean the same thing. Yeah. Choice. <laughs> and then the last one in book two that I have is uh, that in the UK edition, they say that someone is gormless. And in the US edition, they say that they're clueless. Yeah. Do you I love say, that word. Do you say that? Like, th- that, look at that chap. He's <laughs> gormless. Yeah, I love that word. My mum uses it sometimes, Anna, <laughs> more often than people my own age. But I think it's amazing. I think it's such a, like, ah, oh, like, insult to look to. Uh, for me, I just always picture, actually, like, Crab or Goyle, like, and their faces. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're so gormless to me every time I imagine them. Just kind of, like, mouths open. Yeah. Not really... <laughs> that's another one that just like by by the way it sounds and the way you have to like use your mouth to say gormless oh, it yes. really it really gets the point across of like oh he's so gormless yeah, uh, it's, it's it doesn't sound enjoyable <laughs> yeah it's not ple- it's not a pleasant description if someone described me as gormless i'd be like i what are you saying i've had four coffees <laughs> or something like you don't want to be called gormless. yeah if a british per- if i was in the uk and a british person th- said that to me even though i wouldn't know what it was i would knew i would know it wasn't nice <laughs> Yeah, like I could exactly. tell right off the bat. Be like, I don't know what you've called me, but I know I should be mad, exactly, regardless yeah. of <laughs> whatever is nice happening. Uh, so that's it for book two. Bur- book three. Here's one that I do know, but I wanted to like clarify with you that you guys call flashlights torches. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And do you also call torches torches? And it's just like, like a modern fire? rendition of a torch, like a yeah. stick on fire. Like that's yeah. what we would definitely call a torch. So you're just like, oh, this is just the evolution of the torch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have like in Pokemon terms, we have like the Pikachu and then the, like the modern day torch is like the, the Raichu. Is that, is that the evolution of Pokemon? <laughs> yes, that is correct. Yeah. You've done it. Cool. Um, okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry. The nerds are not going to, uh, are not going to come, come at you in your mentions. How dare Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. But I think that makes sense that like you, that what used to be a torch now we're just smart enough to have different torches. So like yeah, I get yeah, it is true. that you don't have to come up with a new word. It's like we already have a word for a thing that you hold that produces light. It's yeah. just that back in the day torches used to be made out of yeah. fire and stick and now they're made and out of so batteries and plastic. Americans came along and were like we need a way to differentiate between the two torches because yes. there's some sort of mix up going on. <laughs> I guess. I mean, they really wanted to make sure they clarified. I don't know. Yeah. I, maybe, maybe that the was flashlight was just invented at by some like... point. <laughs> and someone was like, "No, we meant we need a we need another word for this." <laughs> <laughs> this fire uh, everywhere. Or, or, <laughs> the, the only other thing is that like Stephen Flashlight invented the flashlight and then named it after himself. That's the, a, that's the actually self-centered really man that idea. he is. Yeah. <laughs> so next one that I have is that they in the UK they call someone a newsreader, and then in the US edition they call it a reporter. Is that mm-hmm. just like an interchangeable word, or is it specifically like a newsreader would be like a broadcaster, etc.? Yeah, I think a newsreader is someone that sits at the desk and like speaks to the camera, and then a, a reporter, okay. in my mind, would be someone that's going out and doing the interviews and like feeding back to the people in the studio sort of thing but they're all technically okay. reporters as like a job title yeah um, but yeah so the person that reads the news yeah. i think that makes more sense in in the u.s we would call that person like an anchor or a news anchor oh yeah which, yeah we use that as well i think which but, i yeah it makes sense but i feel like i i, I can't tell if newsreader is, is it cause they're anchored I, I guess because they're like the anchor of the program you always yeah. keep going back to them because it's them mm-hmm. and then they go to the weather guy and it's them and then they do sports yeah, that'll be but it. i feel like newsreader when i first read it in this uh website that has all the differences it sounded like a little demeaning to be like oh you just read the news <laughs> like all you're doing is reading the teleprompter be like, and if you were that like, is your job you're a podcast speaker <laughs> yeah you're that's just like you're just a you word do. you're just a word speaker <laughs> <laughs> sounds worse than gormless <laughs> yeah <laughs> it does, i mean it is like it is very silly to be like oh what if you if you take my job and you break it down to like the truth of it it's like so you just talk to someone and you record it and then a lot of people listen and that's your yeah. job it's like hey shut up <laughs> <laughs> i think like, if you do that with any job it's like if I'm a writer, it's like, you just put words from your head on paper and then people like it. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> so you just, <laughs> you make up a, you make up a story that isn't yeah. real and then people read it. Someone pays you for that? <laughs> yeah. Jobs people are pay money to read things that are pretend. Yeah. Like anything that isn't like a doctor or an, or an engineer sounds really bad when you, yeah. really <laughs> when you like suss it out. News reader. Like, oh, so you're. You're on a reality TV show. You're on a show that's just about your life and people watch yeah. it on you purpose. Just live your life and people pay you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So then let's see. Uh, the next one, this is one that, at least in America, these are completely different things. So there's one part where in the UK edition, they call something a bollard. And then in the US edition, we call it a wastebasket. Is do you guys call wastebaskets bollards or did the U.S. Uh, edition just change it to wastebaskets? Like B-O-L-L-A-R-D. Because here in the U.S., a bollard is like a, it's like a cement little um, like cylinder, like a little pillar that you use yeah. to like stop traffic. Like you would put bollards up so like a car couldn't yeah. drive through something. That, um, so That's is what that what it is in the U.K.? I... Okay. I, yeah, as far as I know, um, I must be wrong because, <laughs> um, but I think it's I think it it must be some sort of waste paper bin. But I we would just call them a waste paper bin, as far as I was aware. Yeah, what was what it could be is that like it, in the UK edition they called it bollards, and then mm. they just turned them into waste baskets because they were like kids in America won't know what a what a bollard is. Yeah, so that's fair. I also I could, wouldn't. I could see that being it. <laughs> 
I mean, I only knew about it because when I worked at when I worked at my engineering plant, we had bollards that would like stop cars from running into important equipment, and that was like yeah. that. And then in uh, when you would go to movie theaters in the U.S., they have bollards like in the parking lot. And as cool middle schoolers, mm-hmm. you would try to like jump over the bollard. Uh, but yeah. I didn't know the oh, word okay. for it yeah. when I was 12. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, yeah, no, that makes sense because we also did that where we would try and jump over the bollards. But <laughs> nice. Must be okay. A, UK a and America thing. coming together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they're called, but we will jump over them. Yeah, um, these things. So the next one, <laughs> these things, they need to be jumped over. The next one is. Uh, Something that in the U.S. we call binder clips. Apparently, in the book, you guys call them bull clips. Yeah, yeah, we do. Like, yeah, I've never really thought about huh. that. <laughs> but they're quite yeah, scary. I don't, really. I don't, they're the I things that like can pinch you, right? Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't. It doesn't. I, I wouldn't say that bulls are particularly pinchy, though. So I don't know why. I yeah, I wouldn't know why they're called that. Um, and I've actually never really thought about the fact that they have a name like that but yeah that's that's what we call those and i guess because it's a school book (laughs) then that's why that's come up yeah Yeah. so the next one is just a fun term of phrase in the uh in the uk edition someone says pop my clogs Mm. which in the u.s edition becomes kick the bucket yeah what is what is the context of pop my clogs i've never heard this means you die (laughs) Oh, um, that's that's like a such a fun, cheery way to say that someone has died. Yeah, it's like oh, he's he's popped his clogs. It's, it means he's died. <laughs> it's, I guess. Yeah, I guess it it means that in conversation, like when you say "kick the bucket," mm-hmm. it, it means you can talk about death it, in a way that doesn't bring down the whole tone of whatever you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is, it's like is you, clog when I say. Oh, sorry. When I when I think of clogs, I think of shoes, like the old school, like clunky shoes. Is that is that what it means? Like when you die, you have you have broken your clog shoes. I think I guess so because I mean we don't have them here, but I thought they were typically like Dutch. But yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think they are. This is this is just a guess, but I guess it means (laughs) you've left your clogs empty, (laughs) so you've like popped out of them. I mean, to be fair, kick the bucket also makes no sense at all. I don't know in what yeah. way that, like, Maybe someone that kicked a bucket anything. once and immediately passed away. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, boom. Why did Jim yeah. die? He kicked a bucket. Now it's the ca- yeah. cause of death, bucket kick, you know, naturally. <laughs> Popping of clogs. <laughs> mm. So the last one here for book four is that what, uh, what we call in the U.S. party hats, according to the mm-hmm. book, you guys call cracker hats? Oh, I didn't know we did that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's something different. Like, hats. I yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I, and that could be a thing where like cracker hats are a thing, but they're not in the U.S. So we just turn them into party hats. I don't know if it's a translation oh, thing. Oh, is oh, the, oh, is wait. cracker hat something you've heard of? Yes. Okay. I do know what you're talking about because it's not party hats. It's the hats that come out of okay. crackers. It's, out of uh, out of cra- <laughs> crackers are. <laughs> okay. Christmas. So you know, like a, a the inside of a loo roll, a toilet roll. Oh yeah, the the, the twist. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So a cracker I know, I know is the, like something yeah. that's you twist open on Christmas Day, and it um out of mm-hmm. them they're quite big. Out of them pops um a small toy, uh, a okay. joke of some kind, and a paper hat that is looks like a crown. So it goes around your head like okay. a crown, and those I think are. I've seen these before. Yeah. Yeah, hats that come out of crackers, but I didn't ever reference them as cracker hats. But yeah, yeah. they're essentially okay. party hats for Christmas. <laughs> but not like the traditional conical. That's fine. Yeah, no. I think, I feel like I saw someone on the Great British Bake Off make a joke. Or maybe it was on an episode of Taskmaster where they like wore something and they were like, look, it's a cracker hat. And then the crowd oh, laughed. And then I was like, I hmm, I bet this is very funny. Yeah. If I was British. <laughs> That is a fun game that I get to play when I watch Taskmaster is like, I'll watch a thing, everyone will laugh, I'll turn on the closed captioning on YouTube, I'll see what the word is, and I still won't get it, and I'm like, it's British, Uh, (laughs) it's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Must be funny to those guys. God. (laughs) I I, I don't think that sounds that funny. That show is phenomenal. That show is, I don't know if you are big into it, but like, I've just discovered it in quarantine, and I can't get enough of it. Great British Bake Off? No, ta- Taskmaster. Oh, no, no, no. I haven't, I haven't watched that. 
Um, it's very funny and I'm very jealous. I want to, it's just a show where they get, it's like one of those panel shows. They get like British comedians just to mm -hmm. do like very silly tasks in obnoxious ways. Uh, uh, like knocking yes, down a bunch okay, of rubber ducks yeah. with tennis balls and stuff. And I, I want to become that. a British comedian so that I can be on the show. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You can. There are, so those quiz shows usually have the same um, set of comedians on them. And there are some Americans mm -hmm. that just keep, and Canadians keep, that keep like, have really infiltrated the British comedian circle. I, and got it. I have to that. break in. I have to find a way. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely could. You'll have to do a lot of fringe festivals, um, which is a big I'm comedian down. I'm very here. down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Will we'll elongate case. your visit to the UK where you actually just break yes. into the yeah, good, good, good. Uh, career path. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go to book five. There is um, there is a phrase where in uh, America we say like, oh, keep your spirits up. And in the UK you say, keep your peckers up. Is that yes. true? So, yeah, okay. I suppose that has been said before. It's not something that I w have ever heard someone say in real life. Okay. But it sounds that, kind of gross because a pecker sounds like a what would be a word for a dick. Yeah. Or a nose. It does. One of the two. <laughs> I like, guess it means it's, that. It's one it of the two. Your, like keep your chin up sort of thing. Do you yeah. say that? Keep yeah. It, so if like Yeah, we say we say keep your chin up. So yeah. maybe if pecker is nose and not your dick, it's keep yeah. your chin up. Um <laughs> I'm going to move on because they up. told us don't be too lewd in this stream. So I feel like that's the farthest we will get. Okay. <laughs> into okay. being lewd. Okay. They said you could curse, just don't do it a lot. So let's not offend the uh, the lovely folks at Pod UK that have been so nice to us. Um, so else. speaking of speaking of fringe, uh, it, they refer to someone a girl's bangs as fringe. That's Is that fringe. something you do? Yeah, we never call them bangs. Interesting. Yeah. Really. It's yeah, it's like so, and and actually, I have an American friend who who has never got how the word works. So I ha I have a fringe. Usually, it's pushed back by now. Okay. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's like a singular thing. It's not like I wouldn't say you have fringe. I'd say you have a fringe, uh -huh. or she okay. got a fringe, or he got a fringe. Does that make sense? Like it's Even a singular. It yeah, that does. Yeah. What's yeah? The only context that I have with fringe, aside from like using it like fringe, like on the verge of something, is I grew up playing golf. My dad is really into golf, and what you mm -hmm. call the, where they have like the really heavy grass is the rough. And then the really mm -hmm. short grass is the green. And then there's a layer of grass in between that's like not that thick. And that's oh, called I the see. fringe. Yeah, so that makes it's, sense. it's funny to call it's something like on your hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like the edge of something. But that's, I mean, it makes sense. I, bangs does not make any sense at all. I don't know why no, we yeah, refer to something really as bangs. No, I don't get that. And as a kid, I didn't understand yeah. what they were meaning until I was a lot older. I was like, what are these bangs that everyone keeps speaking about? <laughs> some people get them. Some people <laughs> regret them for some reason. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, yep, yep. A fringe. So the last, the last one that I have actually comes from book six, and mm -hmm. it refers to what we would call in the U.S. a penny, or what we would call an apron, and you guys call a penny. Is that true? Like yeah. the thing that you cook in, you call that a penny? So no, so we would, I think we would call what you cook in an apron. Um, yes, but that's what we would call too. The the option there's there are things called pinafores, which are. Uh. Um, like th things that go over your sort of dress like items that go over your clothing uh -huh. to keep it okay to keep it um, clean um, and you can shorten that to like a penny I suppose oh and so in, in the, the US 50s we and have things like pennies. that oh, go on. yeah like people were, in the 50s and things like that people would wear pinafores to school and that sort of thing if that's what she's talking about then uh, then yeah a penny I think yeah that, that could be it but in the uh, in the US where we have a penny is like if you're playing sports and you're, oh. <laughs> you don't want to go shirts and skins, you'd have one team wear all pennies, which are just these like mesh little tank tops. Oh, no uh, And then everyone wearing a red pennies on the other team. So it's like super oh, different. But I guess it's the same context of like thing that goes over yeah. your clothes. Something yeah. that, yeah. Something okay, that so we, clothes. yeah. So we have hit time and I don't want to go over uh, because there's a lot of other stuff. But uh, <laughs> Dottie, thank you so much for joining on. This was such a blast. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun to explain words that I haven't thought about um, ever. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very fun to be like, here's the thing that you say all the time. Please tell me everything about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much for having uh, me. I am. 
No, it's an honor. I'm glad we could just uh, spitball about Britishisms and stuff. And hopefully this, the British based audience here for the most part, I'm assuming yeah. since the pod UK enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know what the next step is here since it says mm -hmm. time is up. So I am just going to let someone from pod UK kick us out yes, uh, if absolutely. you want. I'm just, yeah. so I'll, I give you permission to close us Full off. Full permission to uh, close us off you, if necessary. 